them fan out groove You can come get with it too, it's the crew Yo, what's poppin' crew nation? You already know who it is, what it is And what we do, baby, it is your boy Jay And today we have additional information Concerning the collapse between Christian rap group Indie Tribe And no big deals for management group BYOD Now we have been speaking about the situation since about December, I believe. When this information first came out, the entire space of Christian hip-hop was in an array because there were several tweets fired off against each other, and they just, I told you guys this, they weren't kind. They were not kind to each other, but we actually have information as to what happened. Now, what started this, no big deal, actually started this information from, uh, started this information snowballing because he went on a Miles Minnick record, another uh, very popular Christian rap artist who threw his own festival and sold it out. Big shouts out to Miles Minnick out in the Bay. They were feeling the same about some issues that they had. As I told y'all, Miles Minnick had his festival hijacked by Coachella. I can't really say hijacked because, um, you know, it was a name infringement, copyright infringement situation. But regardless, he had to brand his entire festival just a couple months um, before the festival was supposed to happen. And, you know, he decided that, hey, it's time to put it out there because I'm not about to be stopped. Now, the one thing is his situation and no big deals in them situation differs a little bit because uh, Indie Tribe actually had a partnership with um, BYOD. And, you know, Miles Minnick was just kind of using the name and got caught. But the fact that both of their festivals was in jeopardy. That's kind of where they share the common ground. And we will get into all of that. John Keith let it all out the bag as he went to Roost Line and put all the chips out on the table really quickly. Guys, if you are in the uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota area on July the 23rd, make sure that y'all go and check out Godflow Fest. Black China will be in the building. So y'all want to make sure to go and get y'all tickets today go to godflowfest.com and get those tickets okay so let's get into it so we were kind of left on a cliffhanger from last time right so i guess i can't really say cliffhanger because no big deal gave us the information he was he was very i can't say very cryptic because he was he was pretty straightforward as to what he felt had happened like i said they try to uh, take the name from him and cut him out the deal uh, but it seems like it was very it seems like it was a lot more than that and John Keith was tired of everything going out the crew broke the story after no big deal went on that record and let it out um, and John Keith said okay enough is enough enough of the speculation we are going to take this head on now according to him he spoke to the guys and they like yeah man hey hey we good with it go ahead put this information out there and we behind you 100 percent. so if we actually look at this um we now have about 80 percent of the story i say 80 percent because all four um all three guys were behind john keith which was another one that, you know so they said that he could say what he what he did say um and but byod hasn't said anything just yet so we still need the other 20 percent of that story but i guess you could still call it 50 percent because we're getting it from one side right uh but this is the, I, I think that the clock gets put on on byod they were the first ones to say that they were going to put out a statement it didn't happen no big deal makes his record they still didn't say anything now john keith comes and lays it all out and as of this recording, they have yet uh, to say anything. I do believe something is coming. Um, no way they're going to just sit back and allow this to continue to be said because some of the stuff that, that John Keith said painted BYOD in a in a very nasty light when it comes to this. Like we saw the the text met or we saw the tweets go back and forth, and it was like, oh yeah, okay. Like, you know, people are just kind of upset. Like, they're 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 doing this out in the open. Like, everybody will be okay later. But some of the stuff that John Keith said in regards to the way that Aaron Knight was acting or the way that BYOD was kind of moving um, kind of made you raise an eyebrow, if I'm being honest. So, we're going to go ahead and speak about this and go forward. So, what did I tell y'all? I told y'all that 
Um, it looks like that BYOD wanted to renegotiate their end of the deal. They're the ones that actually put up all the money to do the festival to begin with. They fronted all the money and Indie Tribe kind of was feeling themselves and was like, no, we know our worth and we believe that we should get a little bit more than what we were already getting. That's what led to the collapse of this partnership. Tweets went off and, you know, y'all know how this whole story goes. No big deal comes out. And he says, yo, they tried to take the name from me. They tried to cut me out the deal. That's what he said on Miles Minnick's Wild Summer record. So what did John Keith actually let us know? What did we learn? Well, according to John Keith, BYOD, in fact, fronted the money to make their festival happen. And after two successful years, Indie Tribe decided to pour, bring up the money that they have been saving and present it to BYOD as a way to be 50-50 partners, okay? Now, according to John Keith, they had already owned 15% of the festival. This was something that was discussed, um, and they wanted to take about 24 racks and get the other 35%. They wanted to be 50-50, and, and as the story continues... BYOD was like, nah, and as a matter of fact, not only do you not owe, or not only can you not get this uh, with 24,000, we need an additional 35 racks. And something got crossed in the communication, and they thought, I, I don't know what they thought, but we said that, and they responded with, oh yeah, um, basically, we'd be willing to sell you guys 15% of the festival for fifty thousand dollars, they said, it, and we're like, oh, wait, 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 wait. fifteen or fifty? Fifteen percent. One five. We're willing to sell you ten percent plus five percent, fifteen percent of this festival for fifty thousand dollars. In order for you to have the fifteen percent that you thought you had, y'all gonna have to run us fifty grand. Like that's how the information was put out there now now imagine being indie tribe i would be taken aback we thought we owned 15 percent of this festival already and now you're telling us that in order to get the 15 percent for which we thought we owned we owe you another thirty five thousand dollars or in addition to the or 36 racks in addition to the 24 that we were bringing you hey we thought we was doing something something good here we thought that this was a peace offering right we appreciate you fronting the money we appreciate you doing what it was that you had to do in order to make this a reality because this was this started only solely as a as a as a dream as a goal that we were going to get to but because of your business dealings because of who you are because of the way that you move we were able to have this a bit sooner than what we would have liked to and make it the way that we wanted to like they could have had a normal festival and it would have been you know just some small situation and it would have grew from there but with the help of byod it was able to become as big as it was but according to again this is fans first-hand information from john keith no um byod has yet to come out and say anything but according to him they tried to bring a peace offering to be bigger partners within this and they find out that not only are they not bigger partners or not only can they not be bigger partners with the amount of money that they brought in but they're not even as big of partners as what um they thought to begin with and that's kind of wild but let's it, it, it gets a little bit crazy than this so let's continue to walk down this now as the story continues he states that you know in the meeting, they were like, uh, BYOD, because I don't want to just put that. I, I'm not about to do that. I'm not just about to put this on Aaron Knight uh, because you already know how the depiction goes uh, when it comes to, to, to black women and especially uh, women within the industry. So I'm not doing that. But uh, as the story goes, apparently BYOD as a unit were in the meeting and they were stating that, hey, look, not only BYOD, not only are we not going to allow you to be 50 50 partners because this just isn't enough money with everything that we've had to do not only do you not owe the 15 percent for what you thought you owed because there is no paperwork in regards to that but 
we you also cannot throw a festival here using this name or within this space at all. We as BYOD because we own all of this is my car, my money, and the name. Um, <laughs> for those of y'all who watch Temptations, the movie, y'all know what I'm talking about. But um, not only is all of this ours, this this entire everything that is connected with this is ours everything that is connected with this is what we've been able to put together and what we've been able to push using uh our resources so not only can y'all not be 50 50 partners not only can you not have your 50 15 that you thought you had um it's going to cost you about 50 racks and <clears throat> with that you're only going to be about uh 50 percent partners 15 percent partners now the crazy thing about this 15 percent that they uh, thought that they owned was not only did they not um and, and i keep saying they so indy not only did they think that they owned 15 percent of this but according to john keith the 15 percent would for which they thought they owned and i guess that they received after the festival would run through they then would split the 15 percent between uh the four artists and does anybody know that math real quick um, I think it might be somewhere like 7% of, nope, nope, it ain't that, um, probably like 5% a piece, right, nah, that's 3, um, so somewhere like 3% a piece, right, 3 and 5, nope, nope, 4, I would say 4% because that's going to get us back to 16, so uh, somewhere like 3.5%, it was, wow, so they were splitting 3.5%, or each one of them were getting 3.5% uh, from the festival, I think I think we made a little bit of money and any tribe split a like 15 percent cut something like that which is crazy and it's funny it's not funny but it's wild because we hear these things all the time like this is this is normal practice man if you go back and you look at any of those old groups TLC man uh well our TLC is one of the really big ones that comes to mind but a lot of those old groups would tell you they didn't make the money for which um, they thought that they were going to make. And when they actually looked over the paperwork, you know, they were making like a penny per every album. Sounds a lot like streaming to me. But <laughs> they were making a penny per every album sold. And so this was kind of crazy that we were still here. And I guess I can't say that it's crazy that we're still here because, of course, these things are going to happen. But I will say that I am a bit surprised that that it was that that it was that low. I mean, if we would, but the fifteen percent is a normal like agent deal, right? So when an artist when an artist gets signed or when an athlete gets signed, normally the percentage for the agent or or for their their management or whatever the case is, publicist, whoever it is is around 10 percent. i don't think publicists make that much but y'all know what i'm saying um definitely the agents uh, when we talk about sports their agents make about 15 percent. so it was crazy that the <clears throat> name that was on the front of this festival um was only getting the amount for which the agents would get um or man there we go managers within the uh managers within the industry 10 percent um that they were getting the same thing. See, what I really think, because for those of you out that don't know, BYOD is the former managers of No Big Deal, right? And so what I believe is that he was already maybe getting something. Uh, so there was already a management deal in place. And so they just kind of lumped all of this together is what I really think uh, might have happened in the situation, which is why it only went 15%. But normally it's flipped, like the artist gets the most and then the agent or the management company gets the the leaser in percentage like it's 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 90 10 to the artist right but this is not the way that this happened so not only that but they had to between the four of them according to john keith split said 15 percent i've already broken that down for y'all that's about three and a half percent uh per per artist which i mean if they if they brought in a little bit it, it's it's a very low percentage amount from a festival that was sold based off of their name hey but th th it's business you know what i'm saying and again i want to make this abundantly clear you you byod brought a lot to the table this festival 
doesn't happen or maybe it does but it doesn't happen as quickly or it's not as well put together had byod not put the money up uh to begin with and according to them it was a loss in the first year anyways i don't even know if they broke even it was the second year that they started kind of making a little bit of money so ultimately we land here this is the reason why the festival is in murfreesboro this is the reason why this is the reason why the festival is in no big deals hometown this is the reason why the festival has been rebranded to just smoke fest this because they bowed out gracefully is what it seems like they decided look it's not worth it we tried it ain't happening we are who we believe we are and we can make this happen without byod and as i am looking at this it does look like they are, in fact, making it happen without BYOD. So what do I think? Who needs to talk? Who needs to say something? You already know where I stand with this, right? BYOD has to say something eventually. Um, this is gaining legs. And this, as I stated, you guys are like, oh, you know, it's going to kind of, it may mess them up in Christian hip hop, but I don't think they care because they move a lot outside of it. But because this is being mentioned as BYOD, the management company, and those who run, uh, you know, certain situations, and the bigger that Indie Tribe gets, and the spaces that they move in, this could, this could be a little bit of a blemish. Those with relationships that BYOD still have within Christian hip hop might want to move away from this. According to John Keith, they're like, oh, all my homies and 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 everybody that we talked to, they said that this is what we should do. So obviously. This information is not just contained to the Twitterverse. This conversation is not just contained to you all's group chats. This conversation has gotten to other people that weren't in the meeting with you guys, uh, which is why John Keith felt okay to be able to go to Ruslan and let it all out and say everything. Um, the crazy part about this is not only did they say yo y'all's 24 racks isn't going to be enough we need 50 apparently they stated it shouldn't be 50 it really should be 75 but uh we doing business with y'all y'all good people give us 50 and y'all can have y'all 15 percent now come to find out they've had meetings with lawyers and they've talked about these things a different um uh, and they've tried to figure out another way to move but according to them there's no real way to trademark the name for holy smoke fest because it did in fact enter in as a partnership but that's kind of where the partnership stops apparently because it wasn't a partnership according to that side it wasn't a partnership according to the percentages that they were receiving it wasn't a partnership according to them owning some of the festival it was a partnership based off of ideas, but that is, I guess, considered intellectual property and or <clears throat> you can't really on one side take anyone's ideas. Um, whoever gets it out there first is what happens. And BYOD has their name stamped all over this. So that is where we're at. Guys, this is I don't know what to call this. This is crazy. All I'm saying is, is that BYOD has to respond the way I, I will say it again the way that john keith painted byod look i don't care <clears throat> the way that john keith painted byod and said that they were acting in that meeting and basically trying to pull the bars card and, and and saying that you know it's ours and y'all can't do this without us and and we look saying all of that byod cannot let this ride they they can't if they are they can't because if they do, I don't know how they come back from this within this space. It's not about the space. because I make this clear all the time because they move outside of the space. But I believe that they they got to come out and, and at least put out the other 50% of the story because we know the truth is going to be somewhere in the middle. We know that that's going to be the truth. Right now, we're only getting partial of this. I remember the situation happened with Ruslan and, and John Gibbs, right? John Gibbs was putting out a bunch of information out there, saying this, saying that, whoop the whoop. And Ruslan came through and was like, yo, this is the way it happened, but this is how I'm going to do this. And the truth was, was somewhere in the middle. The truth was right in the middle. I believe Ruslan was as 
as honest as he was able to be within that moment. Um, and I don't think John Gibbs was lying, but you got to kind of take these to both sides. They always say there's his side, her side, and the truth, right? Um, the truth is always <laughs> right in the middle. So hopefully we're going to get some information from BYOD soon. Um, it kind of sucks because they're in this mode of if BYOD does respond, it, it's already gotten legs. It, they're already selling more tickets because of this controversy surrounding uh, the festival. But I think we got to throw that out the window and let it be known really what happened in that. And hopefully maybe we can get them to talk publicly about this situation. But we, Indie Tribe, y'all know what it is. Come to the show. Indie Tribe, Aaron Knight, BYOD. Let's have this conversation. Y'all, hey, we broke the story. Let's have this conversation and get to the bottom of it, man. But why don't you all let me know what you all think. Hit that like button. Hit that red subscribe button. Put it in the comments. Whose side are you on? Who do you feel were more in the right? Do you believe John Keith, or do you think he put a little bit of extra sauce on it? Y'all let me know what you all think. Hit that like button. Hit that red subscribe button. Put it in the comments. And uh, it's on.